newly promoted Middlesbrough were the visitors to Villa Park in mid-January 1993, when Aston Villa only required a draw to go top of the table. Along with Manchester United, Villa had for some time been in contention to become the first ever champions of the Premier League. Middlesbrough were gearing up to a hard battle for survival in the second half of the season. There was an experienced spine in the home side lineup. Nigel Spink, Paul McGrath, Steve Staunton and Ray Houghton providing that. Aston Villa was club number seven in nine years for Dean Saunders. Leading scorer Dalian Atkinson was injured, so there was a chance for an emerging Tobagan striker by the name of Dwight York. Struggling in 16th place, Borough had lost Curtis Fleming to injury, so Nicky Moen switched to right back. Recent signing Craig Hignett had a place on the bench. Borough hadn't won away since September. Your match commentator is John Champion. Plenty of expectation inside Villa Park today. Aston Villa level on points with Manchester United. A draw will take them top with Manchester United playing at Queen's Park Rangers tomorrow. But what they're really aiming for is another win. They've been victorious in the last two outings in the English Premier League. 1-0 against Arsenal, 2-1 at Liverpool. Completing the double over the Anfield side. So plenty of good recent work on which to build. Here's Jimmy Phillips for Middlesbrough. Wilkinson Tommy Wright goes out by McGrath and here's Ray Houghton Derek White is the defender this time Middlesbrough got off to such a good start after their promotion last summer four wins in their first seven games it was just what Lenny Lawrence wanted and they went sixth in the table but they're currently on a run of five without a win. Three draws, two defeats over the holiday period. White. Right. Eventually it's Kevin Richardson that sends the ball behind, it's a corner. By right, there's Wilkinson. Very, very close. He has literally a head start in that he's well in excess of six feet in height. And just look how close John Hendry was to turning that in as well. Back to Spink. Pretty low key opening. One chance for Middlesbrough apart. Houghton. Parker. Richardson. And here's Dwight York with an opportunity, which he's wasted. Expecting great things from Dwight York, Aston Villa, only 21 years of age, and sometimes, just sometimes, that inexperience shows itself. Staunton. to Middlesbrough, Villa's opening to the season was far from impressive, only one win in their opening six games and when Burrow were in the top six, Villa were only 11th here's Saunders Ray Houghton and York what a good chance 
He was well found by Ray Houghton. He was unmarked. And he should, at the very least, have got it on target. Nice, neat play from Villa, though. It's become their trademark in recent months. Moen. McGrath. Saunders. Now Earl Barrett. Parker. Blessed with searing pace. But he's one out there against White. Oh, and York is so close to giving Villa the lead. Good block by Stephen Pears. Villa beginning to exert some authority. Saunders in. And away by John Gittins. Stephen Pears turns 31 later this week. He's been a good goalkeeper for a long time for Middlesbrough now. Teal. Barrett. Now Falconer. Dispossessed by Staunton. York. Barrett. Good run by Saunders. He's pulled Gittins out with him. Richardson. Staunton. Now Gary Parker. Look at the space he's got. And it's crept in. He'll claim it. But it took a big deflection off Derek White. No doubt that Villa deserved to be in front. It's not the classically pure goal that they've been trying to score. But they all count just the same. Maybe Gittins could have made a better fist of it. He tried to clear off the line. Phillips too. York. Cleanly won by White. Wilkinson. Tommy Wright. supporters taunting their Manchester United counterparts asking if they're watching in all likelihood they are and here's Saunders through the middle for Villa what a good recovery tackle by Gittins was the difference between 1-0 and 2-0 Gittins looked second favourite Saunders Roberts header. Clearances by Nicky Moen. York. Middlesbrough are affording Villa so much time and space. There's Houghton. Richardson. Wave after wave. Froggart. Very nearly an own goal. Jimmy Phillips. All the play is heading in the one direction at the moment. Sean Teal has gone to the near post. Houghton. Froggett. Oh, and McGrath! Yes! And the goalkeeper's lack of height, perhaps exposed. That's the one fault that you can put against Stephen Pears. He's not the most commanding when it comes to taking the crossball. 
and he was bullied out of the way no foul by McGrath just a good honest strong challenge and there on hand to whip in the loose ball for his third goal of the season and Lenny Lawrence now has to retrieve a two goal deficit spent nine years with Charlton Lawrence because there he developed the art of escapology which may serve him well this season with Borough Staunton York Staunton it's Dwight York rebounded off the upright this is as nice a move as Villa have produced Robert Parker back of John Gittins Saunders and there's Houghton well some of this is bordering on champagne football from Aston Villa maybe we shouldn't be surprised their manager is Ron Atkinson Peak intercepts. It's Hendry. Good challenge by Teal. Now right. Phillips. Hendry. Right. Goes down. Fouled by Kevin Richardson. And at least an opportunity here for Middlesbrough to make some sort of imprint on this game. Nigel Spink asked for four in the wall. He may even end up getting five. Houghton, Saunders, Parker and York with Richardson attached to the end. And no threat at all from Graham Kavanagh. Saunders off the bar and York makes it three Dean Saunders misfortune Dwight York's good fortune and Aston Villa well worth a three goal lead as we approach half time York after so many near misses Finally on the score sheet. And Middlesbrough, frankly, are all over the place. Phillips. Right. Jimmy Phillips. Andy Peake. servant of Lenny Lawrence in his time at Charlton there's the whistle a consummate first half display by Aston Villa set on their way after 26 minutes by Gary Parker's eighth goal of the season Paul McGrath was on hand to get on the end of a Steve Froggett cross and bully his way past the goalkeeper Stephen Pears who should probably have done rather better and then Dwight York in the penultimate minute of this first half after Dean Saunders had hit the crossbar. Middlesbrough at sixes and sevens, and the way they're playing, they might concede six or seven. But at half-time, it's Aston Villa three, and it's Middlesbrough nil. Middlesbrough have made a half-time change. Just being gratified by the referee, Keith Cooper. 
They have sent on Craig Hignett in place of Graham Cavanagh. Hignett, who definitely has an eye for goal. Recent half a million pound signing from Crew Alexandra. Surprised in some quarters that he didn't start the game today. But he's on now. It's right. McGrath. Two benches settling down again after the interval. It's the second time this season that these sides have met. Another one 3 2 at Ayrson Park back in September. Two goals that day for Dean Saunders and one for Dalian Atkinson. And here's Saunders again, and he's made it four. Gift wrapped by Middlesbrough. Caught up far too easily. And a predatory finisher like Saunders needs no second invitation. turning into a bleak old afternoon, particularly for Middlesbrough. Foggett. Back by Moen. And Pears cannot prevent the corner. The two of the Middlesbrough defenders are arguing with each other, which is never a good sign. Staunton. There's Teal! Sean Teal gets Aston Villa's fifth. Ron Atkinson is already ordering up his tea when he gets home because he knows that he's going home with three points. Embarrassingly one-sided. And if Sean Teal scores, you know it's your day. McGrath was beaten to it by Hendry. You count the number of efforts on the Villa goal by Middlesbrough very comfortably on the fingers of one hand. Changed by Villa, and the German striker Stefan Beinlich is going to be sent on. One or two last-minute words of advice from the coach Jim Barron, and he replaces Steve Froggart. 21 years of age, signed from a club called Borussia Borsin. Andy Lawrence knew when they were promoted that there would be days like this. Parker, finally, Richardson, Alton, now Barrett, finally, Alton, here come Villa again, Steve Staunton, what a good cross, and the effort off the bar, and York couldn't turn in the rebound. So close to number six. Staunton. And Gittins can clear. Hendry. Tommy Wright, it was too strong. But how close Villa came to adding another goal to the tally. Saunders header, almost perfect, and York denied on the line by Gittins. Hendry. Jamie Pollock. Hendry. Hignets! Something for those travelling fans to cheer about. 
Middlesbrough on the score sheet with just seven minutes remaining. It's not even consolation, really. Such is the magnitude of the thumping that they're taking. Stands as Middlesbrough's worst defeat of the season if it stays this way. Previously, that was 4 1 at Oldham. Here's Saunders to York, who left it for Parker. in eliminating Chelsea from the FA Cup has not been built upon today just 27 points in what will be 24 games it's uncomfortable and surely that was a back pass well Dean Saunders has been quick to make that point to referee Cooper do as you like a back pass but no free kick given. Saunders. Hendry. Too strong for Nicky Moen. So there is now no doubt as Keith Cooper continues to field questions about the lack of a whistle for the back pass to the goalkeeper that was picked up. There is no question that Aston Villa are heading to the top of the English Premier League table tonight. And they will be there for at least 24 hours. Manchester United stride out at Loftus Road tomorrow. Here's Phillips. Neil Cox. Richardson. It's quickly taken to Hignett. Angel Spink still alert. You wonder when you see Hignett's second half display why he didn't start. Wilkinson. And Hignett's. He's been Middlesbrough's main man. Villa, on the whole, have played really well today. It's a shame that so few, relatively speaking, have turned out to see the game. Just under 20,000 inside Villa Park. It was a bitterly cold Sunday afternoon. And, of course, pockets have been emptied by the Christmas festivities. Not that Lenny Lawrence is either looking or feeling especially festive right now. Finally. Parker. Staunton. Houghton. Staunton. York! He scored one, he might have had six today. Combination of poor finishing and good goalkeeping by Stephen Pears has kept him down to one. And there's the whistle. It's a hugely one-sided game reflected by the 5-1 scoreline. Five different scorers, including Sean Teal for Aston Villa. And Lenny Lawrence leaves the arena. His team very soundly, roundly beaten. Villa go top of the English Premier League table. It's their biggest win over Middlesbrough since an 8-1 victory here way back in 1931. Parker, McGrath, York, Saunders and Teal on the score sheet. It has finished Aston Villa 5, 
Middlesbrough 1. So, no surprises at Villa Park where the home side was staking a genuine claim to the title. Top of the league after that, but Manchester United won at Queen's Park Rangers the next day and went on to finish 10 points clear of Ron Atkinson's side who had to settle for the runners-up spot. Middlesbrough were relegated after a disappointing season back in the top flight. They managed only four league victories between January and the end of the season and went down with 44 points.